Hi there, welcome to my in-depth video on Alt versus Brew. Both are two scores which are used to estimate the risk a child is having in an apparent life-threatening situation. Alt is the earlier one which is recently revised to Brew and I will discuss both and then we will discuss the differences. So first of all, Alt is an apparent life-threatening event and it appears in a sudden um, and it appears when there is a sudden unexpected apparent life-threatening situation in a healthy child of 0 to 2 years. There needs to be strong stimulation from the parent to get the child awake again and the, the parent or the guardian needs to be convinced that without this stimulation the child should have died. Then when you have such a situation the advice of ALT always is clinical observation, cardiorespiratory monitoring, monitoring and blood and urine examinations with an ICG. So it's a lot of diagnostics. However, this advice is seldomly followed because the doctors know from their own experience that this is uh, not really necessary and therefore the ALT wasn't really working. So if you look at the incidents, uh, the incidence of an ALT situation is 0.58 to 2.46 per thousand children depending on the country where you're living. And there are some parallels between ALT and the sudden infant death syndrome. Um, that's what you're most afraid of when dealing with an ALT. ALT is mostly during daytime, while sudden infant death is during nighttime. And ALT uh, is the highest prevalence around two months, while for the sudden infant death it's two to four months. Furthermore, your differential diagnosis is very heterogeneous can be gastrointestinal, neurological or respiratory. And this makes it hard to um, yeah, know the prognosis. One of the pitfalls is that in 1 to 11 percent you're dealing with child abuse instead of an ALT. And um, the diagnostics you use, which are always recommended, are not very meaningful. And just in 6 percent of all cases they attribute something upon your physical exam and your amnesis. So that's one of the downsides. Furthermore, you're dealing with recall and interpretation bias. So you're asking the parents, which are non-medically schooled, um, for a very emotional event. How long did this incident take? And they maybe say one minute, but it was just five or 10 seconds. And it's all very important and you're dealing with the bias. Then, because you're using all these diagnostics and you're taking the child to stay in the hospital for a night, this may lead to fear in parents. Well, this is often not needed because there's nothing wrong and it's just precautions. Therefore, they developed BREW, and BREW stands for Brief Resolved Unexplained Event. And it's in a child less than a year. The incident took less than a minute and there is afterwards spontaneous recovery. So when you see a patient with BREW uh, in the hospital, it should be symptom free. The anamnesis now should be normal. No uh, deviations in physical exams and all the vital parameters should be okay. And the only thing BREW does is uh, it checks if you have a low risk or a high risk. And in the low risk, it makes sure that no unnecessary diagnostics are done or admissions, and this leads to less stress um, and a cheaper healthcare. So that's very good. And in the high risk situation, it's unclear uh, what you should do, and there's no consensus yet. But if you have a low risk, it's very clear. So when are we dealing with a low risk brew? Um, this is when you have a child or older than 60 days. Uh, which is born after 32 weeks or later pregnancy and his post-conceptional age is more than 45 weeks. This is its first incident with a duration of less than a minute. There is no resuscitation and there is no deviant family history for uh, heart diseases or any other diseases. Then, if you're dealing with a low-risk brew, what would be your plan? It's recommended to do a short-term observation, just one to four hours, where you want to see the child awake as well as sleeping. You can use a monitor or a saturation measurement, but it's not necessary. Uh, it's also recommended to do PCR for whooping cough, because this is one of the most common indications for a bruise situation. And you can use an ICG when your heart auscultation is deviant or there's a family history of heart diseases at young age.
When there is a low risk blue, the chance on mortality is very, very low and it's almost neglectable. And its rate for recurrence is unknown, but it's also low. When you have a high risk view, then again, it's unknown what you should do. There's no consensus and there's little, uh, little literature and more research needs to be done. And it's advised to do patient focused care. So whatever diagnostics you deem necessary, you should do and base your further plan based on the results of the diagnostics. And here I've uh, made a table with all the differences between brew and ELT. You can pause the video anytime to check the table in more detail. I won't comment on it because we discussed most of the criteria already. So this was my video on uh, ALT versus brew. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comment section. I will make uh, new medical videos every week, so please subscribe and thank you for watching.